di nagre-rekomenda ng prutas para sa mga merong diabetes at saka merong high blood and fatty liver. Yes, I'm Dr. Rojo, isa akong ENT specialist by profession. However, I also focus on nutrition as analysis ng root cause ng iba't ibang sakit. So, personally, in my practice, contrary sa aking training when it comes to medicine proper, na yung prutas is already considered as the best food para sa gustong magpaka-healthy. The past four years, I've learned something else. And that learning allowed me to discover na yung prutas pala is not just all good. Hindi lang siya lahat positive. Especially sa mga taong meron ng diabetes, meron ng high blood pressure, at meron ng fatty liver in addition to others like sobrang taas na triglycerides sa katawan and also for those na merong mataas na uric acid. Bakit? Ano ba ang meron sa prutas? Why so many other healthcare professionals? And bakit in general considered ito as healthy? Ang prutas ay maraming vitamins and minerals. That is true. Marami din siyang mga other nutrients like say for example fiber. Pero yung na-miss out natin is that yung prutas pala ay mataas din sa asukal. Akala natin yung asukal na nakaka-damage is yung asukal lamang na nilalagay natin sa ating drinks, sa ating kape, sa ating juice. But actually, yung asukal or glucose can also be found in fruits. In fact, yung nagpapatamis sa prutas is also glucose. And in addition to glucose, it's fructose. When I say na hindi ko nire-recommenda ang prutas, it doesn't mean na mas nire-recommenda ko ang soft drinks o di kaya yung ice cream or other desserts like cakes, like candies. Of course not. Those are the worst kind of sugar. Those are the worst kind of carbohydrates na pwede natin kunan because those carbohydrates are very processed and usually they don't come together with vitamins and minerals na makikita sa prutas. However, especially for us Filipinos, I feel that there is a need to emphasize na ang prutas, even if it has vitamins and minerals, kahit pa marami siyang nutrients, but we have to recognize na ang mga prutas, kapag tayo ay nasusobrahan sa ating intake nito, it can aggravate. Pwedeng mas lumala yung ating mga sakit, yung ating conditions, and most especially, kung ang ating katawan is already damaged. Now, yung nakaka-damage sa ating katawan is not exactly the fruits, okay? I have to make that clear. Hindi prutas ang nakakasira or nakakapagdulot ng sakit sa atin. It's actually a combination of our lifestyle. Combination of wrong food intake, no physical activity, lifestyle na very unhealthy, like, say for example, drinking all day, parating umiinom, naninigarilyo, exposed to pollutions, and most importantly, when it comes to our nutrition, hindi natin yan iniisip. We just eat according to our appetite. Hanggat meron tayong ganang kumain, we still eat and eat and eat. And those, those habits yun yung nakakasira sa ating katawan. It leads to inflammation, it leads to pamamaga, and the moment that our liver, our kidneys, our organs are already jeopardized, nagkaroon na sila ng injury, then the addition of fruits in your food may not be the best. It could aggravate the condition. Why? Fruits is loaded with glucose and fructose. Between glucose and fructose, actually, mas makakatolerate yung katawan natin when it comes to glucose because glucose can be metabolized and can be converted directly into energy. However, yung fructose, isa ito sa parang kailangan nating bantayan. Why? Fructose is one step away into becoming fats. This is the reason why sa dinami-dami ng mga pasyenteng nakita na natin, especially those patients who have been battling with fatty liver, with pagtaas ng triglycerides for so many years, at kahit anong iwas nila, 
sa mga matatabang pagkain, sa mga mamantikang pagkain, still they cannot lower it down. For those with diabetes, kahit pa nakokontrol nila yung kanilang blood sugar, but the other markers of inflammation, yung pagkasira ng kidney, yung pagkasira ng atay, yung pagka, pagka blurry ng paningin, so and also even yung pamamanhid ng katawan, ng mga extremities, pagkakaroon ng pins and needle sensations, or pagkawala ng sensation sa paa, those are hallmarks of neuropathy. So, nasisira pati yung mga ugat natin. And that is because it's not just the glucose yung kainangan nating isipin. There is a sorbitol polyol pathway in certain parts of our body, like in our mga blood vessels sa ating mga nerves that are prone to injury kapag sobra-sobra yung fructose na naiimbak dito. Fructose is damaging. It is actually one of the most dangerous na mga chemicals na kailangan natin i-make sure na hindi tumaas sa ating katawan because fructose when too much can be the cause of inflammation within the cells. There is what we call as swelling. So, parang lulobo yung cells. And that paglobo ng cells will be the one causing it. So, if you are always indulging on sweets, too much fruits, yung isang, anong tawag doon? Yung isang whole na saging, 10 pieces, 20 pieces, na ubos mo in one sitting thinking it is healthy, or yung pagkain ng isang manga, buong hinog na manga, every after meal, or pagkain ng watermelon, na isang buong watermelon, simply because you think hindi siya ganon katamis, because it's just watery, ang pagkain ng ubas o grapes, half kilo, and then hindi mo na mamalayan na ubus mo na pala, those are loaded with fructose. And, Hindi ito basta-basta nagagamit as energy, especially if you are eating it together with something else. Ang ating habits as Filipinos, usually ginagawa nating panghimagas yung fruits. When we eat rice, and then may ulam, merong gulay, and then minsan parang naging part na ng ating household to have drinks, parang hindi enough yung pag na tubig lamang. Usually naghahanap tayo ng pantulak. So, it can be in the form of soft drinks or fruit juices. And then, to cap it all, pagkatapos ng lahat ng ito, kumakain pa tayo ng prutas. So, that fruits, that fructose and glucose is actually not going to become energy easily. But it will just pile up. If you will look closely, especially sa mga tito and titas na, mga mommies and dad daddies, or mga lolo and lola, you can try to look at your own health journey na if matagal na kayong nagta-try to be healthy but every year annual physical exam or twice a year na, na laboratory hindi pa rin makorek-korek yung pagtaas ng inyong liver enzymes, yung pagtaas ng inyong uric acid sa katawan yung pagkakaroon ng fatty liver na nakita sa ultrasound yung blood sugar na hindi pa rin controlled yung blood pressure na kahit dalawa na yung iniinom na gamot sometimes dalawang gamot pero both medicine are already in combination so that's actually three to four kinds of medicines already and yet hindi pa rin makontrol but you are eating, consuming a lot of fruits then maybe this video is for you you have to understand that fruit although it has a lot of vitamins and minerals pero it comes together with high glucose and high fructose. And for those na merong nangangailangan ng healing, yung mga pangangatawan na hindi na kumbaga as young and as fresh and as perfect as a healthy teenager, then maybe you need to consider cutting down on your fruits. Because if you want vitamins and minerals, pwede mong makuha yan sa gulay. Majority of vegetables will have similar amounts of counterpart when it comes to vitamins and minerals na nasa prutas but without walang kasamang 
glucose and fructose because the combination of glucose and fructose is dangerous glucose will spike your blood sugar it will spike your insulin and then your insulin when too much can induce inflammation kaya nga yung ating fatty liver yung pagkakaroon ng dyslipidemia or abnormal blood lipids and also pagkakaroon ng hypertension or pagta paglaki ng chan pag increase ng abdominal girth pagdami ng visceral fat sa ating katawan ano yung syndrome na yon it's actually a metabolic syndrome yung tinatawag nating combination ng dahil sa insulin resistance so too much insulin can actually lead into metabolic syndrome that is insulin resistance kasi yung katawan hindi na ganon ka nagre-respond sa insulin insulin is not bad pero hindi pwedeng panay na stimulate yung ating insulin insulin should just be remained at low normal level hindi ito dapat sobrang taas hindi ito dapat panay na stimulate or else insulin will make your body into fat storing mode as long as merong insulin ang katawan natin hindi niya bibitawan yung taba sa ating katawan hindi ito magagamit as energy majority nakikita tumataba it is because of the fat storing mechanism ng insulin we always think insulin as the one button na nakapapag nakakabagsak ng ating blood sugar but we didn't know that the more fat burning o paggamit ng taba na sa ating katawan will not be used eto ay maiimbak lang now there will be a lot of you maybe 50% of you na hindi tumataba but it doesn't mean that effect is not working on you because actually hindi sa ay gusto ko kayong takutin but there is actually danger for those who are non-fat formers hindi man kayo visually na nakikitang tumataba but the danger is it could be na yung pag-imbak ng taba sa inyong katawan it could be in a more deciduous manner yung hindi obvious and that can pile up in your liver kaya nagkakaroon maraming mga marami kaming nakita especially in Mindanao hello to everyone who went to our meet and greet in Davao immediately in less than a week lang siguro yon nung nag-announce tayo na nagkaroon tayo ng Davao meet and greet last year and more than 30 people came in and marami tayong nakita doon sobrang papayat ang liliit very petite but they had fatty liver and when they look at their food intake when they compared their food intake matching our JGC Rojo food list, ano yung nakita nila? They are consuming, over-consuming on fruits because fruits are actually in our caution list. Not really danger list, but it could be on danger list if you are eating too much. Because the moment, imagine ninyo, the moment na taas parati yung inyong insulin because of the glucose part, your body will keep on using glucose. Magiging dependent siya sa glucose at hindi na siya gagamit ng fats. So, from time to time, every two hours, every three hours, gutom ka na naman. Marami pa nga sa mga kakilala ko mismo, even fellow doctors, cannot sleep. They cannot sleep na hindi nakakain. In the middle of the night, 3 a.m., gumigising sila and they have to eat rice. They have to eat biscuits. They have to eat something sugary. Ganon na sila ka-dependent sa glucose without knowing that they're already on their road into developing insulin resistance. And true enough, after a couple of years, tinatanggap na lang na merong diabetes. And we will just say, it's really familial kasi nasa pamilya talaga namin. And there are also those na nagkakaroon ng hypertension because the inflammation can affect one person differently from another. So others might have yung pagtaas ng BP natin, hindi yan dahil sa sobrang dami na iniinom o kinakain ng mga alat. That is just secondary effect. Our body, our kidney becomes intolerant. Hindi na siya nakakatolerate ng asin kapag eto ay meron ng damage sa kidneys. However, if there's no damage in the kidneys, our body can tolerate salt. The most abundant na electrolyte sa katawan natin is sodium chloride. That is why we cannot live without salt. However, we cannot tolerate sugar. Kaya lang na brainwash tayo 
thinking that sugar is the most essential, sugar is the most important, kaya mas dependent tayo. Sino sa atin ang nagbabaon ng asukal or ng candy and not salt before low carb? But the moment you become low carb, for those of you na gumagawa na nito, you can take a picture of your salt na baon, maliliit na vial of salt, or meron pa akong kilala na meron siyang daladalang salt dispenser. And that salt dispenser is now the replacement of the previously sugar or chocolate bars na parating kinukuha natin noon, parating nadudukot natin sa ating bags. Because now we realize what sugar is really is. And going to the second component of the fruit, which is fructose. So whenever you eat fruits, you're spiking your blood sugar, you're spiking your insulin, and then meron ka pang fructose. So all the more that that fructose most likely hindi yan magagalaw, hindi yan mati-turn into energy, hindi yan magagamit as immediate energy, especially if you are eating it kasabay ng iba't ibang marami pang pagkain. So that fructose most likely will be converted into triglycerides. Ang triglycerides pwedeng maimbak sa liver natin, so it can be there. And eventually, kapag sobra-sobra na ito, it can become fatty liver. At kapag na-reach mo na yung capacity ng fatty liver, ng liver to become fatty enough, aside from further damaging the liver from fatty liver, it can be steatohepatitis, and hopefully, wag naman sana dumating sa liver cirrhosis. And hopefully, kahit na liver cirrhosis, sana mapigilan bago ito maging liver cancer. After that one, it can go out in the system. If meron kayong capacity to store fats, sometimes tumataba, but others do not have that capacity na tumaba. But they have that tendency to store fats in the dangerous place less. Yun yung tinatawag nating visceral fats. Those are the fats na nakakover sa mga chan. That is why marame sa mga hindi hindi tumataba, but you know they are eating unlimited rice. They are over consuming breads at panay prutas all day every day. You can see them na kahit payat sila pero yung chan nila ay malaki. Lumalaki yung chan. At yun yung before pinagtatawanan lang namin yan. I have close friends like that. At when we were younger, we don't know any better. Tumatawa lang kami na kapag siya ay nag-overeat, yung lumalaki niya, yung chan lang, but hindi yung katawan. So parang botete, parang, parang hindi talaga siya normal kung tingnan. And now we realize that could be dangerous because that could be built up of visceral fats sa loob ng chan. And when it comes to cardiovascular risk, yung pagkakaroon ng heart attack, pagkakaroon ng stroke, the correlation is not on generalized obesity. Meron ngang mas kakaunti pa yung risk of heart attacks, of, of stroke, sa mga generalized obese, yung mataba ang kamay, mataba yung paa, mataba lahat, as compared to someone na payat pero sobrang laki ng chan. It is the central obesity o yung paglaki ng chan that is more damaging, that is more problematic when it comes to cardiovascular health and dun pwedeng mag-imbak, dun pwedeng maiimbak yung sobra sa fructose na pinagkakain natin. So again, I am not saying na hindi na kayo o wala nang pwedeng kumain ng prutas but if you feel like you need healing, meron kayong kailangan i-correct sa inyong metabolic health, sa inyong laboratory values. When you cannot say that you are 100% at the top of your health, when you cannot say na for the last five years, ngayong panahon na ito is your healthiest self yet, then maybe you might consider taking a break from fruits. If you really want the vitamins and minerals, the bulk, you can replace them with vegetables instead. And hindi rin tayo mabubuhay sa vegetables lang. Yes, we can live kasi marami namang vegetarian and vegan, but a balanced food intake will need proteins and the easiest and the most bioavailable kind of proteins will be coming from meat. So to simplify, kung gusto mong kumain ng balance when it comes to balanced diet, we have a different definition of balanced diet. It is not the platong Pinoy na may kanin, 
may ka, maliit na ulam at merong gulay at merong prutas. Our balanced diet is a plate full of enough proteins with healthy natural fats. So, for example, pork chop. It might sound not healthy for many, but I'd rather go for pork chop than a vegan meat, than a veggie meat. Than, say for example, a whole plate na puro beans lamang. No, I'd rather have meat, any form of meat or seafood, any source of protein na merong natural fats na kasabay, together with, with or without vegetables. So, vegetables for me is optional. And for those of you who don't feel like it's enough to eat meat alone, then you are free to add vegetables. Just be careful with the oxalate contents ng vegetables and the antitoxins na kasama rin ng vegetables because some people might be sensitive with all of those and that sensitivity might lead to other problems like say for example too much oxalate can actually lead into higher higher risk of kidney stone the very very bitter forms of mga vegetables na although healthy but it can have oxalate build up sa inyong katawan but that is another topic for another time and that is also the focus of our ongoing masterclass right now on CKD, chronic kidney disease, hyperuricemia, and also gout and kidney stones. If you wish to know more about that, nandiyan po yung mga admins natin to help you with our enrollment process if you wish to know more about it. But anyway, when it comes to fruits, you might want to consider taking a break at least until such time that you're already at the top of your health and when you are already at the top of your health congratulations you may add fruits into your low carb lifestyle but do it in portions one a half slice of whatever fruit you choose that would be already enough in a day because if you over consume a regular filipino tropical fruit serving like isang maliit na pineapple lang that can already give you an equivalent of two to three teaspoons of sugar and only you can tell if that fruit is really good for you and if it's really something na kaya mong i-take in in whatever amount that you feel you can take in you can own your health you can see which one will work for you and which one will not work for you if you wish to know more we have a masterclass for this one or you can just watch our videos especially in youtube if you wish to know more marami na po tayong ginawa dyan. for those who have questions like on certain kinds of fruits or kung bakit yung fruits ay pinagbabawal natin for especially for those na meron ng diabetes for those na meron ng fatty liver for those na meron ng hypertension if this video is not enough you already made a lot of videos about it and i hope you will learn more marami na rin pong doctor but mostly abroad based sila us european australian based but even if they are foreign doctors, the human body is still the same. The problem nga lang sa ating Asians actually is hindi tayo capable of becoming really big. Konti lang sa atin yung merong capacity to really become morbidly obese. Obese class 1, class 2. Marami sa atin yung nasa stock into TOFI. TOFI, T-O-F-I. Thin outside but fat inside. Yun yung usual sa mga Pinoy and other Asians wherein ang BMI nila ay within normal range but if you look at their visceral fat, sobrang taas na kanilang visceral fat and it's because mala marami na ang nasustore up sa kanilang chan. They look like they are alcoholics especially sa mga mommies, sa mga titas natin na hindi naman umiinom pero yung chan, yung iba, parang buntis pa din and it's not body shaming but we just want you to become healthier because having a bloated always increased na abdominal girth is a signal that something is wrong pwedeng merong mayoma pwedeng merong malaking matres or pwedeng visceral fats na nag stored up na sumusobra na manifestation already of inflammation sa katawan na kailangan nating i-address so Yun lang muna for now. I think I need to go. Maraming salamat to everyone na sumusuporta sa atin. This is your diet doctor, Dr. Josephine Grace Chuaraho. And always remember to stay low carb so that we all stay safe. Maraming salamat everyone. Have a good night. Have a good day. Goodbye.